All right, guys, so let's go over this trade that I took in NASDAQ the other day. So if you look at the screen, you can see that we were consolidating starting Friday and going into Monday. And we had some buy side liquidity here. And then we took that out and then we ended up having a displacement, went lower, digging into the range from Friday. So if I put the session indicators on, blue shaded areas, London open. This is New York open, AM session, PM session. So we had our manipulation run during the AM. And then just before the PM session, we started to tank lower. What I was looking at was once we took out this low, I wanted to see how we traded after taking out this low. If you look, you can see that we took out sell side here, this low, then took out buy side, these highs, and then took out sell side again. So that is a bearish breaker right here. Let me make that red. So we have a bearish breaker inside this fair value gap. So if we were going to continue lower, taking out this low and potentially trying to dig into the lunch lows from Friday, I want to see a lower time frame, either on the one minute or 30 second chart market maker sell model on the right side of the curve, trying to enter to capture this run lower. So you can see the arrows on here. These are the execution arrows. And then you can see where I covered. So let's go down into the one minute chart. All right, so let me scrunch that up. So we trade into here in this fair value gap inside that five minute fair value gap. So we're refining it now on a one minute chart. First indication that we might be on side if we're trying to go short is the body's respected. The wicks go out of it, but the body's respected. So that's the first indication. Then we create a balanced price range because we trade through this fair value gap creating another fair value gap. So that is a balanced price range right there. Make that gray. I like to color code all my stuff. So that is a balanced price range. Boom. We hit that and we start to go lower. So now I got two reasons or two things supporting this idea that we may continue lower. Now, remember I said I was looking for a market maker sell model. So because of that, I want to match this side of the curve with this side of the curve. And basically all I'm looking for is a reclaimed order block, or you can look at it as a failed breaker or a failed mitigation block from this side. So what do I mean by that? In this run, the last high that we took out was this high here. So it's three consecutive up close candles. So we got to take the whole thing from the bodies. Once we close through that, now I'm looking for an imbalance that was made on that run to close through it before we take out our targeted low. So we close through it here. And then if you look, you can see we have an imbalance right here with the volume imbalance. And if we take our FIB from this high to this low, you can see that it's in optimal trade entry. So this is how I like to see everything, all of ICT concepts come together to give me a great trade idea. So my bad let me keep that there let me delete this breaker too much stuff on the chart so this is the one minute chart i want to go down to a 30 second chart so i can refine this a little bit more so now we have our 30 second chart if you look you can see that we have an imbalance here so that's my first entry on this candle when we trade into this imbalance that was my first entry my second entry was when we touched the volume imbalance so we had the fair value gap when we touched it I wanted to go short when we hit the volume imbalance, then I went short again. Then once we took out this high to trade into this volume imbalance, I went short again. So the initial one was a 15 contract entry, like you can see here, sell 15. And then I sold five. So I put on 20 initially. Then I pyramided another five to get to 25 at this volume imbalance. Then once we created this swing high, we had a rejection block here alongside the order block. I'm going to take away this candle for a minute or this box for a minute. So we have this order block and we had the rejection block. Let me color code it. We had the rejection block. So my next pyramid entry was three at the rejection block. Then I pyramided again at consequent encroachment of this wick. So the halfway point mean threshold pyramided again put two on there it gave me another opportunity to put another two on and then once we closed below it we had this volume imbalance 
so I wanted to short another two, and then we went back into the rejection block, so I wanted to short another two. So if you add up all the contracts, I started off with 15, and I pyramided my way up to 36 contracts. My stop loss was above this order block right here. So this is where my stop loss was at. Let's just make that red. Let me delete this. So my stop loss was above this order block. First target was here. Second target was below this low. And then my next targets were, if I take from the bodies, the standard deviation, I had another target. Oh, sorry. I had another target here. So all I'm basically doing is just layering my targets so that to make sure that I'm getting filled. And then my final target was here, which is one standard deviation if you count the bodies of the candles. So all I wanted to do was every time we took out a new low, I wanted to make sure I'm banking in profit. So we took out this low, bank in profit. We took out this low, bank in profit, took out this low. That's the second arrow here, bank in profit. Then the third or the fourth target, fourth arrow, bang in profit to close out the entire trade. And just to prove to you that it adds up to 36, we got 10 here and we got 10, that's 20. Another 10, that's 30. And then a final six for 36. And so that brought me in about 10 to $15,000 of hypothetical money. This trade was taken in a paper trading account. However, any trade taken in a paper trading account can be taken in a live account. This is the futures market. So the prices are pretty much standard. The purpose of these videos is to prove that these concepts work. Whether you want to be in a demo account or a live account, that's up to you. This is not financial advice. So if you are in a live account, it's at your own risk. I just want to prove that these concepts work day in and day out and you can trust them. But that is it for this trade review. I'll be posting more content like this in the future and I'll see you guys in the next one.